Call the board meeting to order. We'll stand and be led in the pledge by Mrs. Matthews. Check and I will meet over there and present a certificate of uh, our gratitude for her good job. That ends this section, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. At this time, um, I would like a motion to amend, uh, to suspend bylaw number 0167.2. Be resolved that the Board of Education hereby suspends bylaw number 0167.2 which allows five minutes per speaking during public participation. And for tonight's meeting, the time limit will be three minutes per speaker. Can I have a motion? <coughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Sorry, Mrs. Reff. If you could just explain to the audience why you want me to The reason for this is because um, so many people contacted the board clerk um, wishing to speak at this evening's meeting, and so um, in order to allow more people to express their um, issues, concerns, wishes, what have you, um, we are amending this bylaw for the evening to give more opportunity for more people to participate. Roll call, please. Mrs. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. At this time, I'll just review a few of the public comment procedures. Copies of these are down in front of the stage. 
The board shall allocate up to one half hour for public comment on agenda items and one half hour for public comment on non-agenda items. As I have done in the past, um, if there are no comments or if there is time left over from the half hour of the public comment portion, that will be added at the end of tonight's meeting to allow the, that time period to be given for the public comment on non-agenda items as we expect, again, a large number of people that would like to comment on non-agenda items this evening. No person may speak more than once on a particular subject during the public comment section on agenda items and during the public comment section on non-agenda items. All statements shall be directed to the board. No participant may address or question board members or administrators individually. Speakers may comment on matters of public interest involving school operations and programs, but may not criticize or personally attack any person connected with the school district. Issues concerning specific employees, either by name or by identifying reference, will not be tolerated, and any violation will result in the speaker being asked to sit down. <coughs> that being said, does anyone have any public discussion or comment on agenda items? If so, please step to one of the microphones and give your name and address. Being none, we'll move on. Next item on the agenda is from the board president. My first item I have is the adoption of policy number 8462, child abuse in a domestic setting. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Yes. Next item on the agenda is a resolution to approve the revision to the school and library budget vote election calendar for the May 21st, 2013 vote. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Yes. My final item this evening is a resolution to approve the additional expense with Vanacore, D. Benedictus, D. Giovanni, and Weddell LLP as the district's internal auditor for the purpose of conducting an additional day of payroll distribution observation. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. 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 That concludes my items this evening. Next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. Hellsgate Renovation Project 1 and 2, Rams Renovation Project, Target Town Renovation Project. Does I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Next on the agenda, we have a resolution to approve facility use request, uh, Andy Velez. Thank you, Mr. Pison. Tonight, we have five organizations requesting to use the facilities. This was discussed last week in uh, the buildings and grounds. Last week we have six organizations, one of them withdrew due to the new fees and the new policy. I have a motion to approve the facilities use request. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Yes. 
Yes. That ends this session of uh, section of the agenda, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Piso. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Um, before you, I have the recommendations from the Committee on Preschool Special Education for the month of January and the Committee on Special Education uh, for the month of January for your approval. Can I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Levenstein. Um, the, the, concern, the concern that I have is where we have private firms or individuals that evaluate our students, and then those same firms provide the paid services for the students. And um, I, I just think that's something that we should look into and have some kind of policy. So noted. Thank you. Other questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Reddy? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Rumley. Next item on the agenda is from the Executive Director for Curriculum and Instruction. Madam President, I'll be presenting the items tonight for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you. Just for your information, there's a revised uh, conference request form with three additions on it that we'll be reviewing when we get to item yeah, eight. Thank you. Item A, my first resolution is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement to purchase microscopes for secondary science classrooms, funding source of school district management efficiency grant. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Wolcock? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Ms. Wolcock? Yes. Ms. Wolcock? Yes. My next item is a resolution to approve overnight field trip to Black Rock Forest for the Foster Town Science Club, March 2nd through the 4th, 2013. Funding source, Foster Town Science Club and parents. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rokoff? Yes. Mr. Redd? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. Item C is a resolution to approve NFA Air Force Junior ROTC drill team to attend and compete in the 2013 National Air Force JROTC Drill Championships March 15th through the 17th, 2013. I have a motion. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rokoff? Yes. Mr. Redd? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Yes. Item D is a resolution to approve overnight field trip to Black Rock Forest for the Foster Town Science Club April 20th through the 21st, 2013. Funding source, Foster Town Science Club and parents. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Bogoff? Yes. Mr. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Item E is a resolution to approve conference requests. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. That concludes my items, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Forgent. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent of Business. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to authorize the award of 2012-13 <coughs> District transportation bid for special needs. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. 
Howard. Item B is a resolution to declare equipment and so supplies obsolete and to authorize disposition of the same. I have a motion. Questions or comments? <laughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. McAfee. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes
can I have a um, a motion on resolution K, item number one? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Yes. Can I have a motion on resolution K, item number two? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Chairs. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson
at the motion. I mean, questions or comments? Please pull your microphones in. Uh, some of the audience members are having a difficult time hearing. Resolution R is a resolution to approve after school appointments. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Rett? Yes. Mr. Zibol? Yes. Ms. Boucher? Yes. Resolution S is a resolution for tenure approval. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Gokhan? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Rubal? Yes. Ms. Sucha? Yes. Resolution T is for your information for an upcoming tenure recommendation. Resolution U, the resolution, or item U, is a resolution to approve lead teacher appointments. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Wilbaugh? 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 Yes. Item B is a resolution to approve appointments for the Bonneville Sunrise Program. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Redmond? Yes. Mr. Woodhill? Yes. Ms. Yes. Madam President, at this time I'd like permission to ask uh, to add four items to the agenda. W, X, Y, and Z. I have a motion to add do you have double A or no? <laughs> and double A, I'm sorry. So can I have a motion to add items W, X, Y, Z, and double A to the agenda? So move. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. yes. Item W is a resolution to approve a leave of absence and appoint an acting assistant principal. <coughs> have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Redd? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item X is a resolution to appoint an instructional coach. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Redd? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item Y is a resolution to appoint another instructional coach. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. 
Item Z is a resolution to appoint the program facilitator for school improvement. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Levenstein. These last three uh, resolutions, the funding is coming from the School Debate Innovation Fund grant, correct? That's correct. Yes. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item AA is a resolution to approve the 2012-13 school district calendar revision for the purposes of the NFA graduation. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, McElroy. madam. Thanks for filling in the seat. Next item on the agenda is from the Clerk of the Board. Thank you, Madam President. I have one agenda item, the approval of the regular meeting minutes from January 29th. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Brad? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Our next item on the agenda is public discussion and comment on non-agenda items. Um, as I stated earlier, I will allow the hour to be used um, instead of the 30 minutes we're combining so that more people have an opportunity to speak this evening. We are on a three-minute uh, speaker intervals. There is a clock up here, so you can keep track of your time. And I need to call on the people that have contacted the board clerk in order of um, when they were contacted. And um, we'll be calling them up first to speak. If there is time left after everyone that has requested to speak, uh, if there's time left within the hour, then anyone else who had not previously signed up to speak will be permitted to do so. First person on the agenda that I have is Mr. and Mrs. David Gaynor. Please step to the podium. Good evening, distinguished members of the board. My name is David Gaynor. My son is an honor student at NFA with a 91.85% average last marking period. My wife's brother is the first in her family to graduate college. My family is still waiting and hoping for my son. Every morning as I drive to work in the Bronx, I agonize over how I will pay for college. But it wasn't until my son began running on the track team for Coach Burks that I began to believe that my son might earn a scholarship. More importantly, my son believes it. My son went on a college visit to Idaho State University and upon his return, he was advised that the trip was unauthorized and his absence unexcused. My wife was given a copy of the school policy on Thursday the 21st. We filed an appeal on our son's behalf within a specified time period and requested a meeting with the superintendent. We have not received a response on either matter. Prior to the 21st, we were never advised of any policy regarding sophomores on college visits. When my son requested the work to be submitted upon his return to classes, none of his teachers advised him of the policy concerning sophomores. His guidance counselor never mentioned the policy when my son requested his transcript for review by prospective college representatives, and the athletic director advised my wife on the 21st that he just found the policy. I don't think it's fair for the students to be penalized for a policy that they were never made aware of, especially if they have parental consent to go on a college visit. My son averages three correspondences per week from various colleges around the nation. 
And one of the main sources of his dedication and work ethic come from Coach Burris. And I respectfully request that absences be excused and eligibility restored to the boys affected. Thank you much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Gaynor. Uh, you have an appointment with me at 8.30 on Thursday morning, if I'm not mistaken. All right, thank you, sir. I wasn't aware of that. Okay, well, I, I did discuss that, and so did my secretary with your wife. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next person I have is Miss Veronica McMillan. First, I'd like to say that I, I'm obviously here on behalf of our school tonight with regard to uh, the school closures or potential. First, I, I'd like to say that I think the time has come for the Board of Education to change its approach to the annual budget process. Year in and year out, I attend these meetings only to see my friends and neighbors pitted against one another as we fight for one child's needs over another. The Board of Education has insisted on making localized cuts annually that impact small groups of children greatly instead of asking the school district as a whole to accept smaller cuts department by department so that we would all share the pain of the cuts equally. If you have a 4.35% shortfall, then every department should take a 4.35% cut. It would be very little from, from everybody, but would spare a great deal of pain for smaller groups. I, for one, as a taxpayer and a parent, am getting really tired of this annual battle. I expect you, my elected represent, representative, to do better than this for our children. Having said that, I'm here tonight on behalf of the Valdegate School families to share with you some of the important details about our school and the reasons why we believe it should remain open. Valdegate School, through the efforts of one of its teachers, recently received a grant and now has installed an outside classroom, which includes a nature trail to enhance the children's learning experience and science, one of our school's focuses. Further, Valdegate offers a large tract of outside property for the students to use for recreation and outside learning and a variety of labs throughout the school to enhance the children's learning experience. During last year's budget sessions, the Board of Education decided to bring back from BOCES children who are classified and have individual education plans in an effort to save money. Many of those students have been enro enrolled in Valdegate School in, five, in our five self-contained classrooms. Considerable effort was expended to settle these children into their new surroundings. Closing Vail's Gate would mean that the children would be displaced for a second year in a row, which could cause regression and behavioral issues in this sensitive population. Several hundred feet from Vail's Gate's front door is Southgate Village Apartments. Many of the residents of this complex who may not have other transportation send their children to Vail's Gate because it is within walking distance of their homes. In the wake of the Newtown, Connecticut massacre, the Board of Education appears to agree that all elementary schools in the district need, in conjunction with other security measures, a vestibule for visitors. Valdegate already has one. It's also the only K-5 school in the district other than Temple Hill and uh, Meadow Hill, which are K-8, which opens at 815. Working parents, and most of us are, will have a hard time finding uh, before the school care. Closing Vail's Gate will mean that the town of New Windsor will have two elementary schools and the city of Newburgh will, will have two elementary schools. However, the board's real concern in not considering Horizons as a school foreclosure is equality throughout the school district in the presence of school buildings, then I'd, we fail to understand why there's not really much consideration being given to the fact that the town of Newburgh has four elementary schools. In a district that utilizes busing, this doesn't really seem like it's an equitable distribution of school buildings. this time, any of you that have um, prepared statements, if, if you would like to share them, please get them to the board clerk and then they would be distributed to the board members as well as the central administration. Next on the list is Mr. Thomas Buffamonte. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Thomas Bucamonte. I teach ESL at Bell's Gate. Um, 
I know it's a very difficult situation and nobody wants to see any school closed and I think we all recognize that it will have a devastating impact on the entire district to close any school, both in the short term and the long term. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the location and geographic distribution of the school buildings in the district. The closure of Bellsgate, as she noted, will leave four schools in the town of Newburgh and only two in the town of New Windsor, despite nearly identical populations in the two towns. Also, the schools in the city of Newburgh are to the northern north section of Newburgh, north of South Street. So basically, it will leave six schools in the northern part of the school district and only two schools in the southern part of the school district. Billsgate is one of the is located in one of the most densely populated and diverse neighborhoods among any schools in the city in the Newburgh and Large City School District and has a number of students who walk to and from school every day. If Billsgate were to be closed, busting these students would drive up transportation costs. Additionally, a large percentage of Billsgate students live in the town of Windsor in the southern part of the city of Newburgh, having to transport, transport virtually all students to the north and many to the far northern and northwestern reaches of the school district will drive up transportation expenses. Many elementary schools in the district are located in relatively sparsely populated areas, and Billsgate is actually somewhat of a neighborhood school, particularly to the people who live in New Windsor, and it's the closest thing even to some people in the southern part of the city of Newburgh. Now, one thing I wanted to speak about was the possible skewing of enrollment numbers. At the last meeting, I heard that the number of students in Billsgate was only a few dozen more than the number of students in a few of the other schools that were mentioned for closing. Now, as of the 2010-2011 school year, which is the most recent year for which numbers were available, Bellsgate had approximately 100 more students than those schools, and was fairly close in range to the other K-5 schools in terms of enrollment. Now, I think the numbers are skewed because Bellsgate has five self-contained classrooms, that's 60 students. If Bellsgate were to be closed, in addition to the over 500 students that have to be placed, you need five classrooms just for those 60 students. That skews bills against enrollment downwards, whereas students, schools with pre-K, their numbers seem to be skewed upwards. If the students are only in school for half a day, it basically doubles the numbers in effect. Billsgate, as far as English language learners, Billsgate has a very large English language learner population, making up over 25% of the school's enrollment. Approximately 100 students are in the bilingual program and 70 in, who are ESL students. If these students were moved, they would need services in the other schools, and it's possible that the district may have to open up new bilingual programs in order to comply with state regulations. And why do that if there's already a well-established program in Billsgate? Um, Billsgate also has approximately 90 students classified as students with disabilities, 60 in self-contained, 30 who receive other services. It has a, a special education continuum from grades K through 5, so the students do not need to move from building to building, they can remain in the building. Obviously it would have a harmful effect on those students to be moved. My time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for you, all of your information. Mr. Mario Acosta? Good evening, folks. Uh, I come to you as a fifth grade teacher at Valesgate, and it's a real privilege to be here with my family. And I consider these folks my family. I also consider you members as well as uh, part of a, my extended family. And um, while I may not be as eloquent as the people that have come up before me, I just want to highlight, as a lover of history, I want to highlight this one aspect of the history of Valesgate School. Now last year, Mr. Pizzo, you uh, joined us with our veterans breakfast. This is something that's been going on in our school for many, many years. Last year was unique in that Corporal Klukowitz, at the age of 90, 93, okay, I didn't know you were going to be here. The clock, the clock, the clock is ticking. It's, it's her dad. The first time he came, this man was a World War II vet, joined 1941, survived the Louisiana maneuvers, and literally went through every single major campaign of World War II. He did not go, go past the summer, he passed away. But I have to tell you from my heart, I was so happy that he came. The Valesgate family welcomed him and other veterans that have been coming for years. So much so that the legislature of Orange County presented our school with a special certificate honoring our efforts and serving not only veterans, 
but other families here uh, uh, in our area. One of my students informed me some months back that he received a $15,000 scholarship to NYIT. I'll tell you, I felt like I, I won the lottery. And while I've got a minute to go, I don't think I'd want to go anywhere else and, and leave Vail's Gate, leave my family, leave my friends. That vet's breakfast is supported by everyone. The hallway is lined with our students, the vets, they, they, we do the parade at the end. Our secretary has an operatic voice. If you've never heard Mr. Valerio sing, it's, it's like an angel's voice. And I'll tell you, by the time the vets go through the wing and go out through the main, uh, the main entrance of our building, uh, there's not a dry uh, uh, eye in the house. It's such an emotional experience for me. It's such a privilege for me to work, to work with these folks. I don't want our school to close. I don't want any school to close. and we are all very sorry for the loss. Ms. Russell Scott. I promise we're going to let other people speak. <laughs> Good evening, board. I stand before you as a parent as well as a teacher of Bell State High Tech Magnet School. When I heard the news about the possible closing of Bell State, I was bewildered. As we know, school districts are hurting across the nation. We realize there are cuts and decisions that have to be made, but the closing of any school is drastic. I have had the opportunity to see the staff of Valesgate School up close and personal. I have four children that are responsible and motivated products of Valesgate High Tech Magnet School. If I have four more children, I would send them to Valesgate as well. The faculty and staff made it possible for me to play the roles of a parent and a teacher, as well as a colleague, without any strife. As a parent, I have trusted the staff to make decisions for my children. Sometimes we think we know what's best for our own children, but it's nothing like a second opinion to help us see the light of things. I can testify to the dedication and perseverance the staff exhibits. The school has had a great impact on the lives of my children. The school providing them with the patience to accept a diverse community. The different programs such as the bilingual, self-contained special ed, and now BOCES allow students to recognize and yet accept others because they may be different from them. It also educates and prepares students for real world connections as they get older. From the classroom to the cafeteria and from the office to the hallway, Students feel safe and secure at Valesgate School. Parents and the staff have formed bonds within the school, as you can see tonight. Parents continue to send siblings of former students to Valesgate because of the caring community created by this school. The school provides all students with high expectations and attainable goals. The staff works, in the words of our own principal, diligently to provide opportunities for their students academically and socially. We don't want to remove other schools because of their locations, but the location of Bellsgate can serve as a means of allowing some of urban, the urban students the chance to experience the suburban area since it is a part of our curriculum. The science grants awarded to Bellsgate School have introduced all students to respect, care for, and understand nature and their roles within nature as human. The nature trail built by Bellsgate teacher, Mrs. DiStefano, parents, teachers, and students serves as an outdoor classroom for learning. There are some rewarding and beneficial lessons taught here at Bell's Gate. Thank you for your time and consideration of the Thank you, Ms. Russell Scott. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Ms. Lewis? No, I'm okay. <laughs> Hi. I'm going to tell you about my story. Nine years and two months ago, a little boy was born 
He was not an average boy, he was different. He was born to a mother who drank, did drugs, and prostituted herself. He was four pounds and 11 ounces. At the time, I had already became a registered foster parent with the Department of Social Services in Orange County. She did not know when she got pregnant, her due date, or any other information that an expecting mother would know. I scheduled all the doctor's appointments, picked her up when I was able to locate her, and made sure that little boy would be healthy in some way. I prayed to God that he would spare the little boy of the drug-addicted babies you hear and see on television. The day the little boy was born, she called me and informed me, your son is born. I quickly rushed, rather sped over the Taconic Parkway through the mountains to Westchester to see the bundle of joy. To my surprise, he was small, head full of jet black hair, and looked, well, let's say, it was every parent nightmare. He was hooked up to every machine, from a breathing tube to IVs for fluids and an in, in an incubator. Oh my, I could only stroke his hair. I'm sorry. That was when the social worker at the hospital found out that he was not going home with her by entering foster care. The paperwork has begun that day and the Department of Social Services was made aware of his birth. On the second day of his life, he had a spinal tap. I was asked by the birth mother, I'm sorry, if I could bring her a bottle of gin, and I didn't. She was holding the paperwork that I had filled it out so that he could be with me. And she ripped it up because I did not bring that to her. The doctor asked me at the hospital, do I really want to adopt a child that would never walk, that would never talk, and would be a vegetable? And I told him, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do it. Thank you. I'm just gonna go on from here. I'm sorry. I love this little boy. I'm just gonna paraphrase now. My son, who is here with me right now, was adopted December 2nd, 2005. <coughs> he was born with fetal you know, alcohol syndrome. He was cocaine addicted. He had a hole in his heart. He had plastic legs and much more. Everybody says, he'll outgrow it, but he won't. Try baking the cake without putting the eggs in it. It's not going to be the same. You can't rebake it. I'm sorry if I'm over the time, but please let me finish. He went to PLE all these years and did arts and crafts and sight words. And he was given an opportunity last year to start this September pass to come to Valesgate School. And I appreciated that. I, he was sheltered at this school. Now he's with other kids who are not all special needs. I want this school, I'm sorry, I'm just passing everything. Board of Education members, please do not shut the doors of Bellsgate School. Other kids may be into a lottery for the pick of a school, but what about the special needs kids that have just been given the opportunity to come to that school who is going to advocate for them? The transitioning into another school would set him back a great deal. And I know this for a fact because my fiance and I together have over 50 years of experience working with the mentally retarded population with Hudson Valley DDSO. I am Crystal Renee Lewis. This is my son, Alex Terrell Lewis. I am a proud parent of a special needs child that goes to Bellsgate School. So please don't shut the door. Thank you very much, Ms. Lewis, for sharing with us. Mr. Brown. Uh, this past weekend, I was in New York at an IB workshop gathering information uh, for the district on the International Baccalaureate's Middle Years Program and the Diploma Program. 
I had planned on giving a review of uh, that information uh, and then uh, more detailed later in April. However, in light of recent news about schools closing, uh, my time before you has a different purpose. Before I go on and talk about Horizons, please understand that I'm only going to talk about Horizons. It's unfortunate that any school in the district has to close. Each, dis uh, each school in the Newburgh and Large City School District is special and filled with students and staff who love it. It would be disrespectful and unprofessional of me or anyone to put down one building and their colleagues for the sole purpose of showing, putting their school in a better light. Again, we are all important because we are all here for the same purpose, and it's to educate the children in our classrooms. So, Horizons and the IV workshop. When they uh, opened up the, uh, uh, the session, uh, one of the things that they started uh, saying is that the mandates and the practices that uh, New York is implementing, the Common Core, the shifts in instruction, teacher accountability, these are all practices and values that the IV has had in place for decades. When the Office of Curriculum and Instruction ins instructed classroom teachers across the district to design units aligned to the Common Core, this was something that Horizons had already done. When Heidi Hayes Jacobs facilitated professional development in October 2012, she stated that Horizons, because of its IB status, was about three years ahead in the process. When Mr. Forget brought reviewers from the State Ed Department to Horizons, one of those reviewers was a former IB teacher, and he stated that he could tell that Horizons was an IB school because of the quality of the student work, the tone of the building, and the conduct of the students. The gentleman also said that if he had kids in the district, he'd want to put them in Horizons. Okay. Many of the standards of the diagnostic tool for school effectiveness, which lists the effective and highly effective traits for a school, these are practices and standards that have, the IB has been incorporating for years. Horizons has always had the reputation of having a challenging and stu uh, student body and being located in the worst part of town. We may not be able to do anything about our location, but we, can, we do and have had an impact on our student body. Horizons has earned the national blue ribbon status not once but twice, and it was the 15th school in the, in the entire state of New York to become an authorized IB PYP world school. Horizons is also the only elementary pre-K to five in the city of Newburgh. For those families who need to send their children to a school close to home, how can that choice be taken away from them? What message does that send? In recent months, much talk has been had about changing culture. Okay. If you know anything about changing, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Brown. you a little bit about Horizons on Hudson. Um, Horizons location in the city of Newburgh is unique and important. Horizons is a critical community asset providing leadership and a positive influence and character to the neighborhood. Its location is in a densely populated area and provides opportunity for children and families to feel connected to their community, walk to school, and get exercise rather than spending significant resources on transportation by both district, by both the district and family. Horizon's location also positions us to benefit from and offer students programs available in the city of Newburgh, such as the 21st Century Program and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Horizons is within walking distance of many of Newburgh's historic sites, permitting many enriching field trips for students to discover the assets of Newburgh at no extra cost to the district. These trips provide fresh air, exercise, and appreciation of the community, as well as learning opportunities for our students not available in outlying schools. 
The district has already made significant investment in and commitment to the International Baccalaureate Program at Horizon. This investment and commitment is not easily transferred to or absorbed by another existing school. The investment has been made into an internationally acclaimed program that is also proven at transforming struggling inner city schools into thriving learning institutions. We as a compact committee feel that Horizons is realizing the promise of the International Baccalaureate Program to the benefit of our students, families, and community. Closing Horizons at this time would be nothing less than squandering this important investment in our program, which surely does not make financial sense. The district has also expended considerable resources over the past year in facility improvements to Horizons, including playground improvements that would be wasted upon closure. Closure of Horizons does not make economic sense in the short run, nor in the long run. In addition to Horizons' critical importance to the fabric of its neighborhood, we personally know that families with motivation and resources have chosen to stay in the district because of the special offerings at Horizons, such as the International Baccalaureate Program and the Unlimited Horizons Accelerated Program. Shutting down these programs and Horizons leaves little enticement for motivated, committed families to keep their children in Newburgh schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kuzma. Mr. Eladius? Close. Close. <laughs> you can help me out when you get up here. <laughs> Everything is pretty much been said, um, but I had anyway. Uh, again, you know, I'm not going to stand here and say close one school over the other or anything like that. What I will say is, though, if we start closing down more schools, we're going to have more overcrowding. We're going to have larger classes, same amount of teachers. We're going to get teachers that are going to get bumped from one school to the other. You have kids that have acclimated themselves to their schools. Um, I, for one, my son, uh, my, my oldest boy, who's in um, the IB program at Horizons, has been with his core group for five years. These kids have been together for five years. These kids study together, uh, they, they play together, they learn together. And I gotta tell you, when I was coming through school, and I went to a pretty good school, I went to a couple of the better schools in, in Queens, a, a lot of the stuff that these kids are learning are blowing us away. I mean, these kids, are learning things that we couldn't have imagined back then. And, and to, to say that we're going to close established schools that have established educators for, for, for something that you get people that left school that decided they didn't want to finish school and we're going to speculate that anybody over 18 years old is going to return to a school that we're going to have to pay for, I think that's this date and time, right now, with, the, with, with things being the way they are, I think speculation is not foolery. I think we should leave well enough alone. These kids belong together. They, they, they belong with their teachers. Uh, again, I'm not going to throw any school under the bus. Uh, but I will say, as far as my boys, the IB program is second to none. We fought hard to get it into the school. Um, I for one, I'm retired. I spend a lot of time in the school. My wife and I, we volunteer. We're there two to three times a week, and we see the progress that these kids are making, and it's unbelievable. To to say that we're going to close down again established schools because we're speculating on something to happen, what we all have to also realize is, and again, at this point. I'm going to say something about it, the, the charter school that we're talking about. You can't force an 18-year-old to go to school. We could open it and, you know, the old expression says, build it and they'll come. 
What if they don't come? We took all these kids that are learning, that we know are going to learn, that we know are going to produce and help society, and we're betting against them to possibly bring somebody who left school back into school. I think we should be the food very well. Thank you, Mr. Eliadis. You're welcome, ma'am. I got it right. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to make a statement in regards to the public charter school. Um, that is not something that the school district um, has any control over. Um, an application was put in by a private organization to the state um, education department and they gave approval and unfortunately by law we don't have a choice we have to pay for that so um, I, that that's not something that the district is happy about I'll say that Mr. Pizzo? yes I'd like to add also that uh, the uh, state ed department this year has chartered 10 schools in New York State uh, they sanction 10 charter schools. Eight of them are in New York City. This is for the coming school year. And two are upstate New York. One is Utica and one is Newburgh. Same, same type of districts, very poor districts. Uh, districts that uh, can't afford to give away a million and a half dollars. But that's what's going to happen. Uh, we will not be reimbursed that money uh, during the first second or third year but in the third year part of the first year will be reimbursed to the district so we have no control over this it's something that uh, a private organization has has appealed and has uh, put together a program and it's been accepted by state ed and the board of regents just to make that clear it's not a newburgh school but it will be paid for by newburgh taxpayers it should be appealed. Is that something that could be appealed, or is that That's written in stone? That's something that would have to be taken up with Albany, with your uh, congressmen and uh, whoever else that you might know, assembly people, your state senators. Uh, it has to do with regents. It has to do with uh, state ed department. Superintendents in Orange County have uh, met with the state regents. We've stated our case many times in the last six months, and uh, the charter is still there. Ms. Kendra Yustein? Yustein? Hi there. I'm here in support of Horizons. Um, first, I want to say I'm very sad in that any school could potentially be closing. Um, in 2005, my husband and I left New Jersey and came up here because it was what we could afford. At the time, we had the same idea as many people do about Newburgh, and I said I absolutely will not send my children to Newburgh schools. They will go to a private school. By the time the, the, when my daughter came, and that was the option, we did not have that option. My husband was out of work. Private school was not an option, so we had to go public school. I am so thankful to have Horizons, because without that, I would not have the faith in Newburgh schools that I do now. Horizons, I think, is great for my daughter. I am fortunate enough that my daughter made it into the accelerated program, and it is the perfect program for my daughter. Anybody who knows my daughter knows that she's very enthusiastic, and if she didn't have that type of program, I think she could potentially be labeled the bad kid, because she likes to talk a lot. Uh, the IB program, I also fell in love with, aside from the accelerated. Whether or not my daughter got into the accelerated program, I wanted the IB program because I thought that the values that the IB was teaching went along with my values. And I think that it's so important that those values are being reinforced in school as well as at my home. The IB and the accelerated program is just perfect for my, my daughter. 
maybe not for everybody, but for my daughter, it is perfect. And I am hardly scared if our school closes, what will happen with my daughter's education? Because she will be put into a class and probably be labeled the bad kid because she likes to talk and is so enthusiastic and just wants to learn and tell everybody her own knowledge. And the teachers and the principals and everybody else that knows my daughter at the school has been so supportive and helpful to me in dealing with my daughter, who is a handful. And without them, I just don't know that I would be able to stay sane enough to keep my daughter in a, in a school as I mentioned, we checked out Montessori, we checked out homeschooling. This is perfect for my daughter, and I really hope that you uh, consider keeping the school open and not, not closing this school or any school. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Justine. And of course, we're very happy that you turned out to have such a pleasant experience. And we are very proud of all of our schools here in the Newburgh and Large City School District. Ms. Kathy Caldwell. Good evening, everyone. Um, with the possibility of closing Bill Gates Magnet School, I'd like to share several thoughts um, about our school math, science, and technology lab program. The school has stayed true to its magnet theme, which began in 1985. The school lab, lab program is unique in that it provides all students an education experience in math, science, and technology that supports classroom learning. The unique lab program will end with the closing of Valesgate School. Our evolving environmental education program has the potential of securing grants and improving student achievement through experiential hands-on learning. Valesgate has had a history where its teachers secure grants such as the Toyota Tapestry Grant, Black Rock Forest Grants, the Lowe's Grant, Teaching the Hudson Valley Grants, Tar Target Grant, and recently we have a two-year partnership with the Sloop Clearwater a grant. The potential for securing, securing these grants will end with the closing of our school. A common thread throughout these grants is after education. The, the Valesgate Nature Trail made possible through a grant with parents and community allows the students the opportunity for learning activities in all curricular areas. We are fortunate to have the property to create the nature trail that provides our student with these experiences. With the closing of the school, the program and the nature trail ends. The elementary school program of labs and after education connects well with the, at the, with the middle school level, in particular the Heritage Middle School. The Sherpa program at NFA and the field biology classes and living environment classes at NFA. This rich continuity of programs will end if you close Bales Gate School. I've had the honor of working with many teachers over my 16 years at Bales Gate School. With the closing of the school, my time with them as colleagues will end. If you must close Bales Gate School, do it right and know that people and children are being affected by in ways that cannot be predicted. Ms. Michelle Ryan. Good evening. I'm the parent of a third grader at Horizons and a seventh grader at South Middle School who attended both Guinea Avenue School and Horizons. It's my understanding, of course, as everyone else tonight, that among the various cost cuts being considered under this year's budget, the district is considering closing either Horizons or Vail State School. This information came to my attention just today as a parent and member of the Horizons Compact Committee. My brief understanding of the matter is that there are cost savings to be realized in consolidating certain administrative functions into what is now one of these buildings, and then to disperse the displaced students throughout the rest of the district schools. I question the wisdom of this district's administration in even contemplating the closure of Horizons, which is the only elementary school in this district with an accelerated program for gifted students and the only school in the district with a prestigious IB program, which has been discussed tonight. As a district in need of improvement, it's incomprehensible 
that we would seek to disband these programs and scatter the students and teachers from Horizon throughout the other schools in the district. This is a waste of valuable teaching skills and curriculum units that have been cultivated over five years plus and will be a grave disservice to the children who have been learning in the HOHIB environment. We've seen this very same waste through the lack of a coordinated transition for some of these students into the middle schools. Those of us who have already suffered through those disappointments surely are keenly focused on making sure that the same doesn't happen for the students at Horizons. <coughs> Thus, if the decision is ultimately made to close Horizons, we will want to know exactly what the plans are for both the IB program and the Accelerate students in our district. Furthermore, it's impossible for me to envision that the closure of HOH could pass muster onto the New York State Education Law. I'm an attorney myself. Uh, Section 402A of the Education Law requires the district establish an advisory committee at least six months in advance of a building closure, which by my calculations is approximately this week if you're looking to close something in September. The education law requires the committee to issue an educational in impact statement, which must consider at a minimum six different categories of factors, including the ramifications of the closing on the community, the potential disposability of the school, I don't, I'm not sure what disposability of the school means, uh, the ability of the other schools in the affected district to accommodate the pupils, and I think that ability includes educational ability and academic opportunities. A public hearing on the proposed closure must take place no later than 60 days following the committee's issuance of its educational impact statement. For those parents here who, like I, just learned today or recently about the possible closure of our children's schools, I would like you to assure us that the, staff, the state mandates public procedures before this can happen and that this district intends to follow those procedures, especially with respect to the important considerations of the academic and community impact of the proposed closure. I also would like to know whether the board has um, started and worked on and, and implemented the required advisory committee, whether it's yet been established, and would certainly volunteer to serve on that committee. Thank you. Thank you. In response to the last uh, speaker's comments about the Education Law Section 402, hyphen A, it is not obligatory. It's a law that advises that it's possible to have that construct in school closing. It's not a required law. <coughs> Mr. Darren Stridire. <laughs> Very good, you get an A. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Darren Stridiron. I'm a parent of a fourth grader at Horizons. And prior to, well this is my first year uh, in uh, Horizons, my son transferred from a private school from kindergarten to third grade. And we were nervous going into the Newburgh School District, even though we've lived here for 10 years. But I am so grateful they got into Horizons. Uh, the school is a gem. Yeah, I am so happy he's there. I've worked with the teachers, the administrators, the parents, and I can truly say that compared to private school, Horizons is the best. I am very happy that my son uh, is in the accelerated program now. Uh, the administrators and the parents and the teachers all encouraged me to uh, try to get him into the program. and. I want to see it continue. There's no reason why a school should close. Uh, we have, I'm sure we have resources. I'm sure we can cut across the board, do whatever we can, just like any family or business would do. And uh, you have a gem in Horizons, and I'm sure Bell's Gate also. So do what you can. Thank you. Ms. Beth Shalinsky. Good evening. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of, of uh, Horizons as well. And first, uh, as anybody else has already said, we don't want to see any school closed. <clears throat> My daughter Emily started kindergarten at Horizons this year. 
my husband and I were very excited because she had been accepted into the unlimited program and thanks to this program she's reading and writing and doing math all on a first grade level. I go to class once a week to lend a hand where needed and I see firsthand just how well these children are doing in this program. They earn the right to be in the unlimited program and maintain the progress necessary to stay in it. What happens to these children if Horizon closes? All these children in the unlimited program learn at a grade level above, so next year if they are in a regular class, they'll be learning the same thing over again. That is not fair to them. The teachers and staff at Horizons are amazing. They know every single face in that school. They truly care about the students and it shows. Please do not close the school, it would be a mistake. Thank you. Jacqueline Borsha. Hello. I understand there's a, a posting for a new search to begin for an executive principal for our high school. If we're looking for ways to be conservative with our budget, it makes no sense to begin this search. We will spend more money. We will spend more money to do that at a time when we can't afford it. Our high schools are now functioning quite well with good leadership at both campuses. It would be a travesty to add this additional layer of administration, especially since our most recent experience was so bitter. That coupled with the fact that we are faced with closing an elementary building and cutting teaching and other staff, I don't think this is the time to travel that road again. Let's earmark those funds to save buildings and jobs. Thank you, Ms. Borch. Felicia Hodges. Please, the board. Uh, Felicia is my fiance. She was nice enough to let me go first, and she's gonna go behind me. My please. It's okay. Okay. So, Mr. Burks. Okay. Dear Coach Burks, I do not know the details of this affair, but I am willing to testify that by meeting the discussion with your athletes came, who came to the Simpsons games in Pocatello, Idaho, convincing me that these young men are fine examples of youth in America. They are polite, courteous, and, and educated young men who are learning wonderful lessons from the athletic experience. They are receiving a broader education during their travels under the supervision of 99% of youth, uh, youth students across our nation. I want to thank you and, and others in your community who gave them this opportunity and hope that you will continue to carry out your mission as coach. We all realize that sometimes the system fails us and this lost opportunity, opportunity to, to complete at the State Endurance Championship is most important for these young men. However, I hope the administration may learn a lesson and make provisions to ensure this won't happen again in the future. I have faith in the potential of these young men and wish them all the best with their endeavors to make the best they can and stay focused on their education and their future. Please feel free to share this communication with the Board of Education members. Best wishes, Dick Fosbury, Honorary, Honorary Chair, um, Simplex Games, 1968 Gold Medals Olympic Games Champion High Jump. Over 20, over 20 years, I've served in the United States Army with an honorable discharge. I understand policies and procedures. Not only have I followed them, but I have written them. Not eight out of nine athletes that went with us, even though we were competing against all-star teams, were on the track team. They were Newburgh athletes. I emailed board members prior to us going, letting them know that we were going, and we were going under the Newburgh League Track Club since it was not a school-sponsored event. Not only did I email you prior, I also sent the board members emails, uh, those that did have emails, I sent them texts through uh, pictures as well, showing that we were on college visits, which we took to, and also that we did a tracking. <coughs> prior to us going also, I went to uh, Mr. Peter's office, and I dropped off a package. Give, I didn't give it to a person, I gave it to the, sec uh, the sec security, who was supposed to give it to the secretary, who was supposed to give it to Mrs. Uh, Pizzo, because I was told last year when we came back we had the same similar issue, 
that next time we go, please let Mr. Beasley ask me, please let him know, which I did in advance. So I don't know what happened in between there. I can't speak for that. <coughs> We've gone to this meet five years. This is our fifth year going to this meet. This program had produced 100% graduation rate, 98% high school to college athletes. We have six professional athletes, and this year we had our first Olympian. I understand item J is on the table. I understand I'm a spring coach, so I understand, and I give God all the glory to all the things I do. Okay, if you check, if you have access to my military background, you would check my records and see I'm a member of the Sergeant Morales Club, a club which is for the top NCOs where you are indoctrinated, you're not, you are selected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burks. Ms. Hodges? It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, board members. My name is Felicia Hodges. I'm resident of the town of New York, and I'm also a former student athlete from uh, the benefit track team. Um, I'm also Coach Brooks' fiance, and I say that for a reason. I'm not trying to give you all my business, but I just want to let you know what's going on. For the fact, past 14 years, um, I've seen him push kids on the track, um, in the weight room, but also more importantly in the classroom, um, with their studies, with their academics, with their attendance. I can't tell you how many kids have filled out their SAT forms or their ACT forms at our dining room table before we computerized, and eventually at our, our computers at home. Um, they've also done their national uh, clearinghouse forms on my computer, my work computer, our home laptops, because they didn't have, all of our kids didn't have internet access at home. Um, he'll tell you that 98% of his athletes have gone on to college, and he does have a 100% graduation rate. Um, whether they compete in college or not, they do, want, they do go on to to uh, higher education. But he won't tell you how many kids have lived with us because of issues that they've had at home, um, how many students have called us in the middle of the night with, with problems, they needed a place to stay, how many students he's advocated for personally, privately, um, because sometimes the lives outside of the classroom, outside, outside the track are a bit problematic. Um, this is at least the third time that I've been before you for similar issues involving the track team. Um, to explain or to get clarity about an issue or problem that's been happening to our student athletes um, caused by district administration and, and policy issues. Um, it's really quite frankly getting a little old. Um, the trip to Idaho that was planned it wasn't a secret. Like Coach Brooks mentioned, he did give information to board members, he cleared it through the athletic director, um, information that every parent had as far as uh, clearing their student, their, their children before the event and writing letters, requesting school information, all that stuff was done well in advance, well before they even boarded the plane for the trip. Um, everything was done in, in decency and order, as it always is with Coach Burks. I know because he's not going to say that, but I see it every day. Um, when they returned, they were all marked as being illegally absent, and what that resulted in is them being unable to compete in last week's county state qualifier, which means they will miss the state meet. This will be the first time in, I think, about 14 years that no male Newburgh athlete will be going to the state championship, which is a travesty. Um, the parents and the athletes and supporters don't really understand that at all, but what you should understand is this. Coach Burks is a nationally recognized coach. Um, he has nine, I believe, maybe ten national championships under his belt, all done here at Newburgh Free Academy. Um, He's a career military man. He's a career military man. He spent 20 years in the U.S. Army, and his reputation is beyond reproach anywhere but seemingly here for some strange reason, which to me is totally sad. He's volunteered for years here working for the track team before he became an assistant, then the head coach. Um, I'm sorry. Can you help me to finish this last thought, if that's okay? Uh, he's coached sc scores of county and state and national championships. He does have a national record holder, and as he mentioned, we do have one uh, Olympian who is also a Harvard grad. These are all successful young men who all came from Newburgh. And we're not asking, I'm not asking for any special treatment or anything to that nature, just to treat him and the student athletes like you do any other athlete and coach in the school. 
um, fairly in this respect. that it's done, that the, the teams leave for the state meet actually this weekend, so it's too late to change that. But please fix this so we're not here again next year with the same issue yeah. again, um, because it's, it's really, this is just too much. Um, again, I'm a, I'm a student athlete, a product of this district, and exposure to college campuses via the track um, helped me get to college and helped me earn a way to pay for it. I, I, I had a full athletic scholarship because of my grades and because of my athletics. I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm asking you that you please not deny student athletes here that same opportunity and allow them to continue with their athletics. Thank you, Ms. Thank Rogers. you very much. <laughs> we have time for one more three minute speaker. No one else signed up, so if there's one last person that wants to come up to the microphone and give your name and address and speak, we'll take one final speaker. Grace Bowles, Newberry. I want to speak on behalf of the technology. The one position you need to retain is the director of technology. We live in a world in which our children have to be prepared for the 21st century. So we need a tech person that can guide our students and teachers through a uniform coordinated program. Did you just see that little child that was up here? Mrs. Mose? Her daughter? I mean, she had her ear phones on. She had her little thing she was playing. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay? But that's, that child is going to need technology when she enters these schools. And she needs to go to, uh, to a higher level. Our teachers are not prepared. We need somebody who is, has the knowledge to teach our teachers and students how to move forward with technology. Uh, so we've gotten rid of all our directors but we no longer have any, any academic directors, but this is the one we really need. When you assign three different people to run a position, which is what I believe you stated at the uh, workshop last week, that you were gonna piecemeal the technology out to three different people, if, if, if that's what I heard. Well, uh, you, and you, okay, let me start again. When you assign three different people to run a position or a program, the program is disjointed and is destined to fail or just be status quo. So please, we need that director of technology. Thank you, Mr. Falls. <laughs> we will close our comment period on uh, public comment on non-agenda items. Superintendent Pizzo, would you like to speak? I thank all of our speakers tonight. I just want to make a comment about the, uh, the elite track team. Uh, we're very proud of your accomplishments. And uh, as I tried to explain to some of the parents that called me, that I as the, they, they seem to think that I as the superintendent can wave a magic wand and change the policy. Mm. That, that's not the way it works exactly. Uh, we have a process which I'll take a couple of seconds here to explain. The process for uh, any policy that we have in the district that affects our students, our teachers, and our everyday working of the school district has to go through a process. Board members are on a committee the committee is called the uh, Policy Committee. And that Policy Committee will review all, all of these policies and then they, they go bring them to the full board that has to vote on it. That's how policies are made. It's not made by the superintendent of schools as one person. I'm recommending, based on some of the things that we've heard tonight and, and what I've been talking to with parents, I'm recommending to the, to the president to uh, bring our policies that affect the attendance of students back for review to the committee, the 
policy committee, which meets on uh, was March 13th. So we will be reviewing those policies uh, in light of what has just happened. And uh, hopefully uh, this situation will not occur again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. And thank you to everyone who came out this evening to support your children, your school district, and your community. We truly appreciate your input this evening. Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose. To discuss the employment history of particular individuals and for matters leading to the employment of particular individuals. The board may take action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Aye. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes, Mr. Yes. Thank you.